Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord, most holy. O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, O most worthy judge eternal, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. You may be seated for our first hymn.
Let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. In holy baptism, Bob was clothed with the robe of, right, of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sins. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Please join me in the 23rd Psalm. The, the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful to death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. Those of you who were here uh, two months ago as we joined together in thanking and praising God for Sharon and her life and, and attending her funeral will notice that some of this service is the same and, and some is different. Um, the, one of the things that is the same is the Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. It's a prophecy of the coming of the Savior Jesus and what he would do, who he would be, and what he would do. And I'm going to give you a preview of four parts that I want you to listen for as I read through it. Jesus, who will have the Spirit of the Lord on him, and he will be anointed. The word anointed is Messiah or Christ in Greek. He will bring good news to the poor. He will bind up the brokenhearted. He will comfort all who mourn and bring the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So with that preview, we hear Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise 
instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. This is the word of the Lord. I invite all of you to listen to this, but you're only listening in on a private conversation because I chose the epistle and the gospel lesson for you, Karen. The epistle, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I chose this because I think Bob sought to do those things. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand to honor Jesus at the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning the 28th verse. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I
be seated.
Robert Lee Brick was born on Wednesday, July 25th, 1945, in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Now, Karen, you may not know this, but uh, there was a time in, in ancient history, uh, oh, maybe in, in the third century, maybe even older than that, when some people celebrated Christmas on July 25th. So your dad was a Christmas present. You did. <laughs> and another uh, footnote that you may not know of, but you, being a Lutheran, you maybe have heard of the Augsburg Confession, and what probably uh, many of you don't know is that uh, the Augsburg Confession was presented um, in Augsburg, obviously, the Lutheran Confession, by two laymen. And one of, them, one of them was named Gregory Brick. He was considered the lawyer of the Reformation, and he was Martin Luther's legal advisor. And I'm sure you're a direct descendant. Well, maybe. Robert Lee Brick was called to the nearer presence of Jesus on Thursday, May 12th. 2022 in Baldwin, Michigan. Dear Karen, Arletta, Dale, Peggy, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, family, and friends, grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Karen, you have experienced a tragedy that very few people experience. And it's one that none of us wants to contemplate. Well, working in a factory many years ago, the summer before I was married, I smashed my finger with a pneumatic hammer attached to the machine I was operating in that moment, God said, you better be a pastor because you're not very good at this. <laughs> the pain was excruciating. About an hour later, I did it again. That pain was beyond belief. To smash your finger after it's already throbbing. As you can guess, this event came to my mind when I was trying to understand in some very small way what you're going through today. After experiencing the unexpected death of your mother and friend, and now the heartbreak of your father's sudden and untimely death. The pain is beyond belief. And so in this time, I am honored to count it a privilege that you asked me to officiate for Bob's funeral. But what can I say at such a time? As we met together, I, I heard you say several times that Bob started every day with devotions. And I know he was a member of Christ Lutheran Church for 57 years. And before that, Trinity Lutheran in Glendora. And as uh, I recounted before, and, and as you know, I... Once in Naples, Florida, met Bob and Sharon on the way into church. So I know that they worshiped regularly when they traveled as well. So I was not surprised when you told me that Bob didn't judge and that he walked the path that Jesus did. So I thought to myself, well, what would Bob say today? The more I thought about it, I came to realize that he would ask, well, what would Jesus say? say today. 
And that's how I chose the text for this message. I believe that Bob and Jesus would want Karen and the rest of you to hear these words. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I pray that when the day is long and your burden is heavy, that you will, like your dear father, come to Jesus and find rest for your soul. Well, today is a day of grief and sorrow. We also rejoice that God has been good to Bob. And the Lord has been with him through this three score and ten plus six years. Growing up with a, a brother and, and sister on a farm can be filled with exhausting and difficult work. But it also can be a great blessing. Well, probably because you guys never argued as kids, right? During his childhood, Bob was able to see God at work in creation. He learned that God sends the rain and the sunshine and causes the earth to bring forth its fruit in due season. This is a great time of year to be a farmer, to see everything in bloom and the, the crops coming up from the ground. But if you're a farmer, you know what you see? You see the weeds coming up with the crops. And you know your work has just begun. And so Bob, while weeding corn and soybeans and picking raspberries and strawberries and baling hay and shoveling manure, he learned the truth of Genesis chapter 3. As a result of sin, the earth produces thorns and thistles. And by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It's no wonder then that when Bob left the farm, he never looked back. He didn't even garden. Yet I know he appreciated the beauty and majesty of God's creation. I'm sure this is why he loved his cabin up north and why he loved his fly-in fishing trips to Canada. He certainly would approve of us singing, O oh Lord, my God. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars. I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. But you know something? Bob knew that God's gifts extend far beyond the beauty of nature, far beyond that magnolia tree behind your cabin and the lake behind it. That was his last picture on his phone the day he died. He knew that there's much more than woods and forest glades and birds singing sweetly in the trees. Bob had his daily devotions because he knew the truth of these words. But when I think that God, his son, 
not sparing. Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. Bob knew that he wasn't perfect. He knew that God sent his son to die and take away his sin. That faith influenced his whole life. Because your father and mother knew God's love for them in the cross of Christ, they were able to share a deep and abiding love for one another. They didn't share a selfish or self-serving love, but a self-sacrificing love, as Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning the fourth verse. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast or is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I pray that whenever you hear those words read, you will think of your father and your mother because they knew the love that was theirs in Christ Jesus, they knew how to share that love with one another. Like you, Bob certainly experienced grief in his life, not the least of which was the death of his son Steve five years ago, and then most recently the death of his beloved wife Sharon two months ago. And so it leads many to ask, did Bob die of a broken heart? Well, it's impossible to know. But Bob did know that Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to, came to bring good news of the gospel of forgiveness and life and salvation to the poor in spirit. He knew that Jesus came to comfort those who mourn and give them gladness instead of mourning. And in his small way, Bob sought to share that joy and gladness with those around him, especially his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. They understood his love for him, his love for them. And when they saw him, they would climb on his lap. I think Bob would want us to run to Jesus in the same way that his grandchildren and great-grandchildren ran to him. Bob and Sharon loved adventure and travel. They especially loved traveling with Al and Kathy Caseworm to places far and wide. And I remember Bob fondly telling me of their trips to Maine and New Hampshire and their Rhine River cruise with Jerry and Linda. And they loved their trip to Alaska, where they saw lofty mountains grandeur and heard the brooks and felt the gentle breeze. But because Bob knew Jesus and trusted in him for salvation, he was ready for the greatest adventure of all. Just as we sang, When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Bob packed a lot into his life. He and Sharon lived life to the fullest. 
During his last days and weeks, he had moments of peace and moments of struggle. Karen told me he was moving forward. I thought we would be okay. He is okay. And he want you to, would want you to know you will be okay, Karen. Bob loved sunsets. Today, because of Jesus, he and Sharon are experiencing the beauty of paradise that is far beyond any sunset that we will ever experience here on earth. May you find rest for your souls the way Bob and Sharon did and now enjoy that rest forever with Jesus, who on the cross our burdens gladly bearing, who bled and died to take away our sin. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand for prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and that through the gate of death and the grave we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith your Holy Spirit, that he may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Lord, in your mercy. Grant you all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, in the communion of your church, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, help us, we pray in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe in and find comfort in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our... The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.